Hello, it's Eve, the Creative Curator. Welcome back to my channel. And this is the next lesson in my Sewing Skills for Beginners online course, which I am making available for free here on YouTube. Please do give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't done already, and turn on notifications, that little bell, so that YouTube lets you know when I post a new one. I'm releasing a new video every single day this month up until they're all released so that you and anyone that you know can learn to sew for free. Today's lesson, well, yesterday we covered threading a machine, filling a bobbin and loading that bobbin into your machine. Today we are going to cover machine maintenance. So your sewing machine is a very important piece of equipment. You need to take care of it if you want it to take care of your sewing needs. I will be showing you how to clean out your sewing machine, how to oil it, and just basically treat it with a bit of TLC. I'll also be showing you what kind of resources, tools, things you need, like your machine oil, the brush, that kind of thing. Have fun, enjoy, and I will see you in tomorrow's lesson for the next one. Bye. <laughs> In order to maintain your machine are varied. Um, I've got a little basket of goodies here. For removing purposes like lint, dust, that kind of thing, there are several options. We have, I've just realized you can't see them because they're off camera. <laughs> so first and foremost we've got this kind of double ended brush, um, a lint sweeper brush and a kind of bottle brush on the other end. You may find that this is the only thing that you need. You may also find that a Cotton bed is helpful. This is a bamboo one. Um, sometimes these are not so great because as you can see, it's slightly fuzzy. I don't know if you can see that where the cotton is actually coming away. So you can end up leaving more lint behind than you're actually taking up. So I try to use these just in like external areas, like if I'm cleaning around like crooks, nooks and crannies that aren't, um, you know, that don't have moving parts to them. And then another one, is my awl. Because of the sharp point, it can sometimes be helpful. If there's like a big lump of lint and I don't want to risk pushing it back, then quite often I'll use my awl and I'll just ease it out with the point. And then a piece of fabric is always handy for getting in there, um, popping a little, you can pop a bit of oil on it and you can rub away and just lubricate all those areas that need lubricating. Um, those are the things for like cleaning. Obviously you'll need a screwdriver in order to release key things like if your presser foot is not a clip on, if it's a screw on, you'll need this. Um, you'll also want to remove the needle as well. Um, and so yeah, a screwdriver is very handy. And then of course we've got oil. So I have this Singer sewing machine oil which does a cracking job. I also, so I had ordered something similar to this in order <laughs> to show you guys, but it hasn't arrived. It's still waiting to dispatch six months on. Um, having a kind of like microscopic needly type thing to apply the oil is really handy it means that you can be more um, considered in the amount of oil and the location that is a very different size tip to if you look at the singer you can see how much bigger that is Ooh, let me go back so it focuses like the nozzle is quite big um so you can end up with a bit of mess from this one it's really hard to get hold of these though so this is my spinning wheel oil for my spinning wheel um and it's basically the same kind of oil. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I would use one of these to get into nooks and crannies too. So those are the things that you'll need. Um, do pop your little, um, well, TLC repair kit together. It's not really a repair kit, it's a TLC kit, isn't it? Like to keep your sewing machine in good order. So the first job is to, first of all, remove your presser foot, clunk. Second of all, put it somewhere safe. Um, remove your needle. So just unscrew your needle, look. So remove it, pop it somewhere safe. So you can see, um, my Benina does not have a way to get into this area. Um, not that I'm comfortable doing anyway. Um, it has a bunch of different holes here. This is like a little um, tab to protect the screw. And if I unclick her, you will see that there is a screw inside. And if I were to unscrew that and a few others around the machine, I will be able to get this partially off, but not fully. So I leave that for the man that services it. <laughs> um, I am not necessarily telling you that you should do the same. 
it depends how confident you feel i so as such i can't get into this area because this is a it's a swiss made and it's a very solid machine a lot of modern machines are not as solid as this they're more plasticky and they have sections that can easily be removed that is not the case with this one so let me show you how you would lubricate well let's do the cleaning first so we've got cotton bed <laughs> this kind of cotton bed i would be using um for stage two so first of all you're going to want your lint brush and you can just like work to remove oh did you see that drop on the floor um and you're just trying to maneuver all the bits of lint outside you don't want to be pushing anything into your machine okay you're working to bring stuff out you can also use the bottle brushy bit if you want um to give like if I lower my needle nope my presser foot behind my needle which you can't see because it's in the way here we go can you see here I've got some kind of like gremlins lurking around so I would just get in there and try and get rid of some of that lint that's attached yeah it's a bit dirty okay and then Next up, we need to actually remove this interior bobbin section. I'm going to actually tilt my... Oh, let me get rid of these gremlins. Look, there's some of the lint that just came out from the doorway. Let's put that to one side. I'm going to um, just change the angle of the camera at the moment so that you can see right inside while I'm doing it. Okay, I feel like you can see that quite clearly now. So this is needing to be removed and you'll always have a little click here, that little clip will allow me to release that and already I don't know if you can see but there's a lot of lint hanging out here this is why I use my awl because if I try to use my lint brush I'll end up pushing that in and I want this massive piece of lint to come out can you see that mm. so you should ideally be cleaning your machine and giving it an oil a re four to five bobbins is the recommendation i actually don't do it that often um oh look we've got a real nuggly 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 it doesn't want to come out mm -mm -mm. that's when i'm going to put my ooh, i'm wetting my tip dude i what's it and just trying to scooch it up a bit no that's not coming either oh yes look at that can you see that massive amount and I'm doing it the other side as well um, you really don't want to be pushing anything into your machine okay I'm going to remove the hook section as you can see which we'll need shortly that's going to give me a bit more access to that big lump of lint oh yeah can you see that It's in such a tricky situation. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. Can you see that massive lump? Ah, it's so annoying. Um, you can use um, like a vacuum like a small nozzle to suck stuff out but don't use pressurized air because you end up pushing stuff into sections as well i'm going to grab another cotton bed it's not going to work yay i got it look at that <gasps> can you see that a lot of lint okay let me do the other side this is like the open section that I can look at that oh my god How gruesome is that? I keep showing you, but it's 
the camera is so close it's actually off screen so make sure that you remove all your lint um, away from the innards because you don't want it to go back in and then i'll get a bit of cloth there's my blue and i'm going to put some oil on my cloth like so and just smush it around a little bit and then i feel like this should be a little bit more here so you can see more clearly what i'm doing and then i'm just gonna lubricate it whilst cleaning it so give it a good old and obviously you want your sewing machine to be turned off while you're doing this oh it smells like it hasn't been done in a while Some. Um, obviously this bit of fabric you're going to throw away afterwards you're not going to need it pick up any excess oil um, you can also remove the foot plate I'm now going to use the same bit of fabric to clean off this housing um, to try and get rid of some of the lint that's lying all on it and the key is to make sure that you're oiling all the moving parts when you've got metal on metal. So at the moment I'm just using it to remove the gubbinses. I'll dispose of that because it's all gross. And then with the hook back. So now we need to also do this. I need to get another piece of fabric. So we have another bit, a nice fresh bit. And again, I'm just going to get the oil. So you sometimes get on the hook section here you sometimes get like a little burr like a little mine's actually fine um which can snap your thread obviously because it's going back and forth back and forth across your thread um so i'm giving that all a good clean and then i'm gonna oil this again yeah you can't see i keep going off camera sorry And I'm going to cover this all in oil. It's a little bit like sticky. Uh, my hands are really oily now. <laughs> but your machine will last you a very long time if you take care of it. I've had mine. Gosh, when did I get this one? I feel like it was when I was living in near Kingston. So 2000, hmm, yeah, I feel like I've had it, I've had it for at least 15 years, I think. I'm just taking that oil, by the way, and reapplying it on the inside to make sure that everything is lubricated. And then I'm gonna pop this back in you see how that fitted in naturally in that cubby hole like it's not going to fit any other way it will just slot into position where it's supposed to go and then what i'm going to do also is using my super super thingy one i'm actually going to just just to make sure there's enough there There we go. Then this will pop back down over and it will just click into place like so. And oh gosh, I've got sticky fingers. If I turn that, you can see that's turning. And that sounds lovely because it doesn't sound like anything terrible. So I can't get very far in, as I've already said, to the housing of my main area. So I'm going to work on oiling all of the reachable areas. So I'm going to use my um, super skinny one. Actually, I'll use the big one because it'll be easier to show you how to do that. So I'm literally going to anywhere where there's a moving part. So if I move this, we can see that this shaft, is the needle shaft moves up and down, up and down, up and down. 
and it funnels quite high up. So if I put a dribble of oil and then that is going to work its way up and into Oh, I can see a lot of lint underneath. Hang on a minute. Let's get another. Right here, which is like one of the thread guides, I can see. Let's get my little awl. All this lint hanging around. Ew. This is why having an awl is really handy. You can get into nooks and crannies and not worry about dislodging stuff into the main area. Of your machine and so no try and get the thing even now let's ugh, ugh, i just wetted it up with my mouth and then realized there's a whole bunch of oil and gunk on it that was really gross ugh. i'm just going to put a little bit of oil there that was so gross um and actually, you can't really see past it, but I'm also going to put a dash on the part underneath the needle. There we go. So what's actually the machine foot. And, ah, we get oil everywhere. And that's just helping it lubricate a bit. Cool. Now, the next job, and I'm going to have to move the camera again. Okay, so clearly I have a moving part here. And I can't really, I can see that there's a big, uh, like a hinge just inside. I won't be able to reach it with this because that's just going to put too much oil everywhere. So, I, And because I can't take off the front to get to it, I'm just going to use a little bit of this oil right there on that because I can see exactly like the hinge. I'm just going to put... A little squeeze of oil and then new that around and see there's another one right there if you have a machine that does oh it's not going to come as close as i need it to if your machine allows you to get closer no i can't even reach that other hinge um i'll just be dripping oil then obviously take off the front um if you feel comfortable and you have um no electricity powering it, um, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, I have to wait for mine to get serviced in order to do that. So that's how you would remove the oil, um, not remove the oil, remove the lint and oil your machine to give it some TLC. If I put my foot and my needle back in, okay, so she's all threaded up and I've got myself a bit of fabric here. I'm just gonna, once you've oiled up, obviously you don't necessarily wanna go into sewing with a piece of fashion fabric, um, a project, because you don't know how much loose oil you've got lurking around. So I recommend that you grab a piece of old fabric and just um, sew a few stitches. Oh, she sounds much nicer already. <laughs> She was clunking quite a lot before. Um, clearly she needed some love. Um, I feel like there's dirt still coming through. Can you see the colour of the thread is slightly dirty? It is getting fainter here, so I'm just going to keep sewing another line. And actually it's probably because I oiled along and in, so I just need that oil to be removed. Oh, she's clunking a little still. I need, I probably should have changed the needle as well, to be honest. It's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. We're almost at white. almost the same colour. You see how it started? Oh, you can't see. You see how it was really dirty when I first started? And gradually now we're here on the end of the third line and it's much better. So just keep practicing. Um, look, there's another big lump of lint. 
it's all coming loose. I feel like there might be a little bit more in there actually. Um, so yeah, once you've oiled her up, do remember to sew a few lines of stitching to make sure you don't have any gremlins left in there in oil. Use a bit of waste fabric. So that's basically what you're going to do to maintain your machine. Obviously there's other things like dusting it regularly um, to keep it nice. Um, but yeah, just every five or so bobbins, change your needle. I mean, you should change your needle with every project. But every five or so bobbins, definitely like open up the bobbin area. Give everything a bit of a clean and a bit of an oil. And if you can get inside the upper section, which I'm pointing at but you can't see. <laughs> if you can get into this main housing section, um, most modern sewing machines you can then have a, put little drops of oil on bits where there are moving metal. Like when things are moving against each other, keep them lubricated. Obviously do it with your power off and don't put too much oil in. Um, and yeah, if you take care of your machine, it will last you a lifetime.